Welcome to our first series on posters, best practices, writing poster titles, and figure titles. This is part one of a three-part series of videos on best practices in writing and designing posters. Part two focuses on designing for readability, that is, developing discrete sections, eliminating words so your poster is not text-heavy, and cueing the reader on how to view your information. Part 3 focuses on telling the story of your poster, creating flow, organizing your introduction, framing your methods, conclusions, and next steps. But in this video, we're going to focus on writing titles as takeaways. That is, complete thoughts that cue the reader to the meaning of your overall poster and each figure in your poster. Now, posters are a critical component of science communication. They're an important element in a successful scientific career. For young scientists, posters are typically the first way you present your scientific work to a larger audience. Moreover, poster sessions provide opportunities for personal interaction, and they're really designed to be networking events for you. And important collaborations have started from a poster presentation. The best posters are snapshots. They should engage colleagues in dialogue and summarize your work if you are not present. And good titles are critical to the success of your poster because they allow your poster to be understood quickly when you are not present. And by titles, we mean not the section titles, but in fact, the main poster titles and the figure titles. Because these are what people first read when they look at your poster. They will skim your poster looking first at the title and at your figure titles before they read any of the other text on your poster. First, let's look at the difference between two poster titles, poster title number one and poster title number two. Poster title number one reads, E2F1 effects on P53 and neovascularization in the ischemic myocardium. Poster title 2 reads as follows, E2F1 stabilizes P53 and suppresses neovascularization in the ischemic myocardium. So what's the difference? Title 1 is a topic headline. It addresses the topic, but doesn't really cue us about the concepts behind the topic or the possible implications discovered. It tells us that there are just effects on P53. Reading this title, we can't determine what those effects are. In contrast, title number two is a message headline. It tells exactly what the research discovered. And now the reader knows the main point and has been cued into the subject of the entire poster. And the reader now knows what the research is about. Now, what makes poster title number one a topic title and poster number two a message title? In our topic title, the key word is a descriptive noun that provides no relationship or causality among the concepts in the title. We know E2F1 has effects, 
but it's impossible to tell by this title what they are. And the title isn't a sentence. It's not a complete thought. In contrast, the message title has as its keywords active verbs showing a relationship or, or causality among the concepts in the title. E2F1 stabilizes P53 and suppresses neovascularization. And as you can see, it's a complete sentence, a complete thought. With the message title, we now know the subject of the poster. We know its main point. Now, good poster titles don't necessarily have to be sentences, but they should describe the poster's main point. Let's look at this example. Development of metastatic precursor lesions in marine pancreas following mutant crass expression in adult PDX1 positive cells. With this title, we can quickly process the main point of the poster that precursor lesion came about as a result of a specific gene expression. So here we can see what the main point of the poster is. Of course, it's very easy to transform this title into a sentence. All we need to do is change the word development to a verb. So the revised sentence reads, metastatic precursor lesions in marine pancreas developed following a mutant crass expression in adult PDX1 positive cells. We'll leave it to you to decide which of the two titles is best. And finally, you should use message titles in your figures as well. Avoid topic titles and number your figures. Let's look at some examples. When you produce your figures, each figure title should be a sentence that tells us exactly what we should take away from the figure. In figure two here, we see that VEGF expression in the ischemic border area is higher in one strain of mice than in another strain of mice. And the chart and the photo support that figure title. The figure title tells us exactly how we should read that chart and photo. And each figure title uses verbs showing relationship or causality. In figure three, we see that hypoxia induces an increase in, e in E2F1 and P53 protein levels. And again, the figure components support the figure title. And finally, each of your figures should be numbered so we know where we are in the sequence of the poster story and for future reference. So here's your best practices checklist for your main poster title and your figure titles. Does your main poster title have a message title and not a topic title? You want a message title so your readers can understand the main point of your poster. And do you use message titles in your figure titles as well and avoid topic titles? And are your figures numbered to show story flow and for reference? Follow these best practices in poster titles and figure titles will make your posters be much more effective communication vehicles.